How's it going? I've got a loud voice. We got the sound on that? <laughs> My name is Andre, and I'm here from Silicon Valley, and I'm very happy to have been invited to speak here at Frontiers of Interaction 11. And today, I kind of want to talk to you about um, the way I design across, and the way I think about how to design across multiple digital devices. It's something that I call think from the center and design for the edge. Um, the way I want to kind of get into this is I want to frame a little bit how I think about design in general. And so when I got started, I'm sure many of you uh, may recognize this if you'll uh, allow me, I was taught very early on that design is not art. Uh, what is art? Art is a personal expression of an idea. It's the artist is looking to ex explore and explain their point of view, either through painting or through writing or through photography. But I was told that design is not art. We as designers, we do things that have artistic qualities, um, has artistic merit. But generally speaking, being a designer is not about being an artist. And so I got my start uh, as a graphic designer. I've heard some of you mention this is here in Italy is known as communication uh, design, but as a graphic designer or communication design. And I was taught very early on that design is about communication. It's the way you communicate from a designer to their audience, how you sell an idea, how you, the qualities that you use to communicate uh, of various uh, different ideas that you're, you're, you're looking to do. And so in that sense, a couple of years ago, uh, some students of Richard Buchanan, who teaches, who used to teach at Carnegie Mellon, showed me some of the things that he used to teach them about what design is. And Buchanan used something called the rhetorical stance. Now the rhetorical stance, um, to my knowledge, was developed by a fellow named Wayne Booth. And what Wayne Booth was looking to do was to understand how a speaker communicates to an audience, much like I'm speaking to you right now. And he was looking at the qualities of what happens in a speech. And so there are three major qualities he uh, defined. There was the logos, the pathos, and the ethos of a speech. The logos being the logic of the content. Does the content make any sense? Is what I'm saying make any sense right now? There was the pathos, the impact of what was being said on you, the audience. How do you feel about what I'm saying? Do you agree, do you disagree? Does it make you feel happy? Does it make you feel sad? And then there's the ethos, the style of speaking. Is it humorous? Um, what's the voice being used when you're communicating? And so Buchanan took these notions of the rhetorical stance, and he also noticed that there was the triad of object design uh, from a woman named Elizabeth Sanders. And she came up with the notion of the triad for, for objects, that objects have three qualities the usefulness, the usability, and the desirability. How useful is the object? Can you actually do what the intent of the object was for? Um, that, you know, does the object make any sense? There's how usable is the object, you know, and how that makes you feel. When you're using it, can you use it effectively? Does that make you feel good? And then there's the desirability of the object. You know, when you look at something, like the iPhone, for example, its form and, and appearance, do you actually want it? And so Buchanan took those two things and he put them together. And what you get is an idea of how to communicate, how a designer or a product designer can communicate through an object or a speech to the customer. You can map usefulness to does it make sense. You can see that usability is how somebody feels about the thing. And there's the way it looks and do you desire the, the object in question. And so for a long time, what I've called myself is an interface designer. And interface design is a little bit like um, graphic design, but it's got a slightly different quality. And that is, it's the conversation that occurs between a product and a design, uh, and the person using the product. My job largely has been, can I make something work between a person and the product? Can they talk back and forth? And so when I saw this notion of design being taught by Buchanan at Carnegie Mellon, it made a lot of sense to me. Inter infer, uh, interface design is, largely thought of these three triumvirates. Information, information architecture. Um, we have the behavior and the interaction and the workflow of the things that we do. And we have its appearance, color, type, and the structure on a screen. And so combining all those three things together, you get this chart. And this is a framing of how I think about design. Um, so take that for a second, and just you can pause and look at that. This is a way to think about design in the digital age. But how can we use that? Why is that useful? Well, let me give you a, a sampling of what I think people do today and how they, they attack certain problems. 
Currently, you see people generate or uh, build or design a desktop application. And they'll spend a lot of time building this great application, has all these behaviors, does the things that it needs to do. And then along comes somebody, you know, product manager or whatnot, and they ask them to repurpose all that work and make a web application version of it. Largely what you do as a designer is you take what you did on the desktop and you translate it sideways to a browser. That's usually how things, things happen today. Um, there are people who are out there making rich internet applications, these great info viz kinds of things, using things like Adobe Air or Microsoft Silverlight. And you'll spend a lot of time and effort making these rich internet applications. And then somebody comes along and says, that's wonderful, that's great. Can you make it fit on a cell phone? So you take all this great work that you did and you kind of cram it onto a mobile cell phone. It's kind of a, kind of a pain. These days, we all hear mobile first. We're only gonna design a mobile version, and that's great. Attacking things from a mobile, a mobile point of view is a really great way to start a problem. However, oftentimes people make the mobile version, that's all they do. They only make the mobile version. They ignore everything else. Oh, there it goes, sorry. <laughs> so what this usually does is that wherever you start in the platform that you're designing for often becomes the core definition of the product itself. People think that the product is the desktop app, or it is the mobile app, or it is the browser app, and then they translate sideways. They try to take the product that they've made and move it to some other platform because the way they think of it was where they started the design process. And that kind of leads to suboptimal design across a system of devices, in my opinion. So when you do that, you often find that you tend to design yourself into a corner. So how do you break that cycle? Well, let me ask you this. This is the number four. It's a simple concept, right? I put the number four up on the screen. I'm pretty sure everybody understands what that means. One, two, three, four. But the number four at its core is actually a kind of a mathematical construct. It doesn't really exist as this. This is the number four, and you definitely understand it. But this is not the only way to express the concept of four. There are many other ways to express that concept. Two plus two, I could spell out four. I can uh, do it in another language, like quattro, and I've got the Roman numeral, ver Roman numeral version. So four is a, is a mathematical concept that can be expressed in multiple different ways. And so the thing I think you need to, to start to ask yourself is, isn't that the same thing for interface design? The interface of any software product is nothing more than an expression of its code. So when you make the desktop app, or when you make the web client in the browser, or when you make the mobile version, that's not the product. That's an expression of the product. In the same way that four can be expressed in multiple different ways, the interface of what you make on the different platforms is also an expression. It's not the actual product. So let's revisit this thing for a second. If you look at design and think about how I think about design and, and whatnot, let's put everything away for a second and just look at the three major parts. We have content, we have behavior, and we have its aesthetic. So thinking from the center means taking these three things and instead of treating them at the edges, move them to the middle. Start to figure out what these things are at the core outside of any technological platform you've got. So I'm at Twitter these days. I'm gonna use uh, a tweet as an example. It's a simple example, not a complicated one. Hopefully it expresses the, uh, the concept. So for a tweet, what is the tweet's content? Well, there's a bunch of data behind it. It's got an API, you can access that data. It's got different things of the data. We've got the profile, the person's image. We've got links that point to content in, uh, on the web, as well as photos and movies. There's geotagging and there's badging if you use Foursquare or Gowalla. There are all these things that are the data uh, for, for a tweet that exist on its own. So when you're looking at that, and you're working with this as a designer around a team, you all have to understand the core data agnostic of the platform. What is just the core data itself? What, is all that, what does all that mean? More importantly, what do we call it? How do we organize it? So you gotta step back and look at the content on its own. The next thing you'd look at is the behavior. Now I don't mean the behavior of the application when you put it on a mobile phone, or how it behaves on a desktop. There are core behaviors that exist abstractly for your product. 
In the case of a tweet, we've got three. There's more than this, but there's at least three. There's replying to a tweet, there's retweeting it, and there's favoriting it. I know there's a lot of people out there who want to add to this, like quoting or marking. Those will get added probably at some point in the future, we'll see. But we know that there's these behaviors that live, again, outside the platform. I put these icons on the screen, I put the data on the screen, you understand what I'm talking about. I don't have to put it in the form of a mobile version or a desktop version or a browser version. And then finally, there's the aesthetic. How do you put it all together? And what kind of aesthetic voice do you give the thing? So here is a tweet. We have a type set, we have a type spec, we've got a grid, a composition, an avatar, the iconography style, the timestamp style. When I put that up on the screen, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know what that is. It's a tweet. We've organized all this data. We've got some of the behaviors that are, you know, in this case would be on a rollover or on a swipe. But you understand what this kind of thing is. And yet I have not put this inside of a browser or a mobile phone or a desktop client. It's got its own sense of, of quality. It's got its own uh, life outside of all of that. So this is the point. You gotta step back and look at these three core things, the content, the behavior, and the aesthetic, and start to define them on their own. When you're looking to design digital products across multiple devices, and you wanna do that successfully, you're gonna have to define, define those things first. That's what is gonna be happening in the near future. We're gonna have lots of devices. At E3, there were thousands of new devices that, are, that appeared on, on, on the market. So once you have the definition of the core pieces, once you understand the data and the content and the behavior of what it is that you're building, thinking from the center means you take that and you then go off and you de design the desktop app. Now you do this normally, oftentimes. But again, the moment that you're now ready to design the mobile or the browser version, you don't translate sideways. You don't take what you built on the desktop and say, how do we make that work in a web app? You go back to the center and revisit all your core pieces. What, again, are the core things? And then you go back out and you treat the browser version and the mobile version as an expression of the product. Those are just different expressions of what you're doing. Again, it's just like the, the expression of four. And then from there, you'll be able to start doing things like adding um, internet appliances or thin clients to the system. And more importantly, in the future, we're going to have all these kiosks and billboards and surfaces in restaurants and surfaces in the airport um, all over the place, in the home, in the kitchen. And now you can actually start to look and design your product from a point of view of how does that work for each platform. Now, in practice, this can be a little difficult. I've um, got a couple examples here. Before I joined Twitter recently, I was uh, in charge of the Yahoo Mail redesign, the one that just came out uh, very recently. And here, we employed a lot of these practices. We designed the browser version, the iPhone version, and the iPad version. And in this, we had to constantly ask ourselves, what are the core things that we're doing? What are the core pieces of content? What's the core behaviors? You know, storing into a folder, replying, marking as spam. And I think we did a reasonably good job here. It, you know, there are some inconsistencies. There are some things that are not perfect. You'll notice, for example, like the selection in the browser is this dark blue, but on, on the iPad, it's this light yellow. You know, the icons that we developed for the iPhone and the iPad haven't made their way back into the browser in this case. Those will happen. But largely, I think you can see that there's a system coming around here. That we have a product that can start to be used appropriately in the different platforms. That's the thing you're looking for. More importantly, you'll note when you look at this kind of thing, it works like a lot of other systems. More, most importantly, like a brand system in graphic design. A lot of you who do graphic design know how important making a system for a brand is. The business cards, the letterhead, the packaging, the, the billboards. It has to feel like it belongs together. And so I think this is a way you start to also develop a brand system for products when you're doing interface design. Um, there are other people out there doing this kind of thing right now. Gwala, who I love, I love the guys at Gwala. They're a small company and they're starting to, to deal with these issues. But you can see it's got some, some differences going on. This is probably an example of where you spend too much time worrying about the iPhone and the iPad but not looking at them across the system. You're kind of designing them on their own and not going back to the core. Now, they do have core data. They've got the photos and the locations and things like that. And they're a small company. There's only like 30 or 40 of them. They've only got a couple of engineers. So it's really hard to do that. On top of that, their product is evolving right now as we speak. Um,
But this is going to become the kind of thing that you're going to deal with. Uh, you know, Twitter, where I work at right now, we've got our own set of issues. We've got the iPhone and the iPad and the browser. Features are not quite in sync. There's all these kinds of things happening. So we are now starting to go through this process ourselves. But the big thing I want to leave you with in this, in this, in this, uh, with this talk is that you need to understand, and I'm pretty sure you do, that going forward in the very near future, we're going to have more devices, an explosion of devices, not fewer. We're going to have larger surface areas and far more contexts that we have to design products in. And with that in mind, um, the problems we're going to be asked to solve are going to be richer and far more complex. And our customers are going to be using multiple devices with our products in the same, in, in, in that regard. They're not going to be using less. They're going to be switching between devices, between a phone and something in the kitchen, and maybe the, the computer in their office. This is going to become more and more aggressive, bigger, faster. So the solutions of the future, in my opinion, are going to require that we as designers understand that the products that we make in an interface, that's not the product. We've got to step back and look at the core pieces, the content, the behavior, the aesthetics, and define those in the middle and then start to, 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 to move out and design for the edge. And that's what that means. So in everything that I do these days, my approach to design is trying to define that stuff in the middle, and I call that thinking from the center, center and then designing for the edge. So I'll be around if you have any questions, and I thank you for your time. Grazie.